Okay, so what is a good IPM scout? Um, one of the things I've noticed, you know, when I was uh, cruising around in the 90s, um, you know, I was calling myself an IPM specialist, and a lot of growers thought that meant integration, inter, uh, international plowing match, which uh, I didn't even know what that was at the time. And uh, uh, so even selling IPM uh, was, a, was a big deal. Uh, so, um, uh, so, uh, now, uh, and thanks to the increase in biocontrol and, uh, IPM practices, um, almost every greenhouse now has, or nursery has an IPM specialist uh, working on their staff. So what is, uh, what does that person uh, need to have in their character? Let's suppose you are a brand new person wanting to be hired as an IPM specialist. So first of all, I'm not afraid of insects. Uh, a very small percentage of the human population uh, doesn't go ooh uh, when uh, they see an insect eating another insect. So uh, it's you're one of us if you say cool. Uh, so uh, Sarah and I both say cool when we see something feeding on something else. So uh, that's a start. So that should uh, weed out the people that uh, at, uh, probably shouldn't be in the industry. Um, you must be available, and what I mean by that is um, if you're a staff member and it uh, is getting close to Mother's Day or Valentine's Day or something like that, and you're pulled off of the scouting uh, to help in, in uh, those, uh, those, um, those things, um, it, it, it lets down the scouting program. So you must be able to be available during those times um, and of course, that's when uh, usually when uh, pests uh, arrive on the scene right around those times to have high pressure, uh, pest pressure. Uh, have good communication skills. And what I mean by that is you have to um, dissect what you're seeing in the crop and communicate them prob uh, uh, properly to whoever's doing the action. And that action may be a team uh, releasing beneficial insects or doing a spray. And it is important, and Sarah brought up the apps a little earlier on, uh, that is a good way as long as everybody is uh, trained properly on, the, on that software and knows what the, uh, uh, you know, almost a shorthand of, of the software uh, means, uh, meet regularly as well. So uh, uh, knowledge in the subject is important, obviously, uh, but it's uh, also important where you get that knowledge from. And I'll go through each one of these uh, in the next slide. And also trustworthy. And what I mean by that is um, if you are uh, hemming and hawing about uh, what a recommendation should be to the person doing the action, then you're, you're least trusted that you're giving the right, the right uh, recommendation. And that's what I try to do. Okay, Sarah. All right, Meg, it seems to be frozen again. Uh, Heidi suggested clicking on the screen. Instead of, uh, oh, clicking on the screen? Let's see what happens. Oh, it worked. Yeah, that worked. Yay! Okay. Uh, so the components of scouting um, are uh, background knowledge, monitor the crop, data record keeping, communication to the team, and follow up and assessment. And I'm just going to go through each one of those now. So you can click on. Let's keep Sarah awake too on the other end. Awesome. <laughs> so background knowledge. Uh, so updating it. There's things changing in the industry all the time. Uh, there's there's uh, updates um, as we move further and further. Our um, biocontrol programs, for instance, uh, the longest ones at EcoHabitat are over 20 years old now. That's 20 uh, plus years of releasing biocontrol on a weekly basis. So um, as we gain knowledge uh, and time, uh, we update the industry, uh, not just uh, uh, at Equal Habitat, but also uh, extension agents, uh, government researchers, uh, private researchers, and so on. So um, make sure you're uh, in that loop, in that network. 
attend industry information sessions. Uh, this is one right now. So uh, there's, uh, you know, trade shows and that sort of thing. When I go to these things, I uh, particularly looking for uh, PEFs uh, uh, subjects. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't have to. It doesn't matter how obscure it is. But we, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm maybe not as interested in say fertilizer as as a, as a result. So I I uh, um, select which ones I want to see and uh, and uh, and use my time wisely for that. Um, watch what you Google. Uh, I've had many a conversation with uh, growers that have said, well, I was on, uh, on the internet last night and I saw uh, this and, you know, it's, it seems like a good way of going um, as far as, uh, you know, how to control a pest or uh, releasing a biological. And uh, I always ask them, I say, okay, how did you get there? And a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this too, you can't remember. You're so deep into the internet that uh, you can't remember how you got there. Well, if that happens, you might want to trust. You might want to uh, second guess what you're um, what you're reading. Um, I have what I call a Google crowd, and uh, some of the extension people on the line here would would know what I mean. It's people that I've, and in a lot of cases, I've met, uh, and I know the uh, research uh, that they're working on. And I know to trust this, especially if they've published something or uh, in some cases I can directly contact them. You can't all do that, but you can directly contact them through uh, someone like Sarah uh, and your extension agents uh, know them as well. Uh, recent journal articles, this may cost uh, some money, but there are things online, uh, some good uh, journals. Um, and uh, you can get a list. Uh, I'm sure Sarah has a list. Uh, journal articles like sh that she likes. Um, again, you may have to, to um, uh, pay for the whole article, but you can also look at the, uh, the uh, abstracts. Uh, there's usually no money. So have a look at that. And I like to, uh, I like to um, make sure that they're recent. Sometimes they're updated by the time, uh, you know, five years rolls around. Uh, government extension, like I mentioned, uh, I get a hold of Sarah, and uh, and uh, she can be a wealth of information uh, with one phone call, and uh, it may even uh, post COVID come up to your greenhouse, and you can talk to her directly. Consultants, of course, is a little biased, but uh, uh, you know, we often are are in the greenhouses uh, all the time, and and able to uh, stop by if there is a, is a particular question. <clears throat> so monitoring, um, again, this is a, a foundation of what we do at uh, Eagle Habitat. We monitor the crops on a weekly basis. Uh, good hand lens is important. Sarah went through a few of these, but uh, um, I prefer 20 times. Um, Microscope. I have one that isn't uh, field friendly, so I have one back at the uh, at the office. Um, but there are some fairly reasonable uh, ones available uh, that you can take something back. What I uh, take a, a leaf or something back and look at them under the microscope. What I don't like is the kind of uh, hybrids. I guess that you have to press right up against. Uh, something to look through it. And usually they have a light and that sort of thing. Where that falls down is uh, they, uh, uh, it, you have to be able to hold a leaf in one hand and look at what you're looking at uh, with the hand lens in the other hand. So um, if you have to put everything down all the time, it becomes, uh, becomes cumbersome. Be consistent. Uh, same time each week, just to give you an idea what uh, I or my employees do. Um, we try and be in the greenhouse at the same time each week. In fact, uh, some of my long time clients, I, I, uh, I screw them up by showing up on a day early or a day late and they, they actually set their, uh, their internal uh, clocks by when, when we're going to be there. Uh, but also, um, when you're walking through a greenhouse, if you do the same thing each time, 
Um, I know it's monotonous, but it takes away the um, variables uh, uh, that, uh, you know, you have a bit of a control over them. Um, you know, I'm right-handed, so I, I, I look right, then I look left, but I'm always doing that. Um, I'll walk down a, a right side of a bench uh, uh, looking over my right shoulder first and then left, and it just, it just uh, becomes uh, automatic. And uh, uh, that way, uh, you know, almost don't have to think about anything else but just looking at the plant. I'm also um, uh, looking at uh, the plants as um, uh, I'm looking for something that's different. It's just like the old Sesame Street of the day, you know, what one of these things doesn't fit in, right? And I'm looking at millions and millions of plants. Um, I don't want to look at each one. I'm, I'm glancing over them, but as soon as I see something that's out of whack, uh, that's when I stop and I look closer. Um, it's also important to know your greenhouse action threshold and uh, economic damage threshold. Um, Sarah touched on this in her talk. Um, so the action threshold is best to be worked out by whoever's running the place. So, um, and I've had great discussions over the years of, um, you know, I may go into one greenhouse and their action threshold is a bit more tolerable than the next guy. So I make sure that I know what they are in each greenhouse. Uh, for example, if there is, uh, can their customers tolerate some um, uh, aphid mummies on their plants, for instance? Um, some can, uh, some can't. Uh, so that kind of tells me that we can't, we have to work a little bit quicker on things. Economic damage threshold or injury threshold is one where we're actually losing uh, plants due to pest damage. Um, this is, uh, this is more serious. Of course, I make sure that I'm working at least three weeks ahead of anything that's going to happen. And in a lot of cases, a lot further than that. So if something happens, like a spray does not get done or a biocontrol, uh, uh, issue comes up, uh, you know, just, uh, the week, out, uh, two weeks ago, we had the, uh, uh, the big uh, snowstorms in the U.S. and a lot of things were stuck on the uh, tarmac in uh, in uh, Memphis um, through FedEx and that sort of thing. So I knew those biocontrols weren't coming. Um, so if that happens, we still have a window of time before any damage really happens. Um, and that's important. If you're reacting to something and something gets missed, a sprayer breaks down or whatever, uh, that damage would just get worse and, uh, and lose a lot more money. Um, so the other thing you're looking at uh, by coming in and into the crop in a weekly basis is you're watching for changes. Um, uh, you know, are, are your numbers going up or whether you're using um, uh, yellow sticky cards? Um, are your numbers going up or are they going down? Of course, you're taking... Uh, you're recording the data as you go to we'll get into that. Um, are the plants uh, looking yellower uh, than they did last week? It's important to remember, have a good memory and, uh, and observation skills. Uh, remember what you saw last week, uh, uh, especially in certain spots in uh, uh, problem locations. And every grower knows they have problem locations where it's a corner of the greenhouse or something where it's a little bit warmer. There may be a, a faster uh, reproduction cycle for the insect. Um, pay attention to those problems. Uh, they're usually always problems. Um, they don't get better. Uh, but what they can do is you can look at them as a separate uh, part of your greenhouse. Early indicator plants, so again, Sarah touched on this. Um, uh, you know, we had uh, had that work with the uh, with the mum varieties that uh, you know they were flowering within the crop. They don't have to be um, those ones actually. That all, that project all started by seeing uh, 
foliar plants being um, more attractive to thrips than uh, the blooms, they were actually nowhere near blooming. So we were able to go to that one variety and uh, and check to see how you know whether we had uh, thrips coming along and 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 uh, you know it really took we really started releasing bios heavily on those uh, on those uh, varieties and the grower uh, just just put that in, right into the program. Uh, check on bankers. I'll get into bankers in a few minutes, but uh, you know part of your job is also to make sure that if you are using say aphid bankers that they're uh, in good health and uh, there are wasps cycling off of there. If there isn't, uh, you need to change them up. That's there. Um, what I like to do is develop a shorthand method of recording. So it kind of speeds me up. So I have, uh, you know, if, if for instance, so this give you one example. Uh, for instance, if there's a, a trips larva on uh, on a plant, uh, I go LOL because I always remember that, which is uh, larva on leaf. Uh, so I can look back at my, and I do everything by hand still. <laughs> uh, so uh, I can look back at it and go, yes, I actually have a column for it and uh, with a ch check mark in it. And uh, I can see, okay, that's in the larval stage in that part of the greenhouse. Um, I won't go into software. I, I, um, I had. Um, you know, I have consulted on a couple of things uh, for the apps that are out now. Um, uh, you know, the, just the one thing to reiterate what uh, what Sarah said: uh, uh, you still you still need a human to make those uh, those decisions. Uh, almost a feeling of where it's going in the in the crop, um, but it, it's an excellent uh, uh, you know both a spreadsheet and uh, and scouting software are excellent uh, tools uh, for our data. It's definitely making things a lot easier. Um, where the big breakthrough has come is uh, being able to be in the greenhouse in real time. Um, some early apps uh, that came out, uh, they may have, uh, uh, you know, you still kind of had to go back to your uh, computer in the office and download download things. So those, those days are over. So. Um, in the cloud, we have the cloud and that sort of thing. So, um, so things have come a long way, and pretty much every biocontrol supplier now has them, or they will be having them. And uh, so they're worth a look. Um, uh, but like I said, you still have to make those decisions in your in your crop. Um, when you're looking at your data, uh, make sure before you do your next scout that you're looking at your previous week's entries. I found I have to do this more and more as my memory fades. As I'm, uh, I think uh, Sarah called me a Generation X. I think, I think I'm, uh, yeah, I may predate that. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> so um, yeah, just uh, make sure that you go over and you know, let's always get a summary uh, ahead of time. Um, and then you're looking also at the data to look for long-term uh, things. Patterns uh, is, is more of a short-term thing, but it, 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 you know, again, are your numbers going up or down? Um, and why? Uh, you know, they're important to see before you go into your next uh, scout. Uh, and then trends are longer-term things. Where uh, are they? Um, are they uh, uh, training in the right direction overall? Uh, you can look at, uh, you know, I've looked back on some of my old data. And you were able to see that uh, certain aphid species appeared on uh, the same kind of the same week each uh, each year. So able to kind of, you know, our our holy grail of this business is predicting, and uh, it, you know that comes as close to predicting as we can. Um, okay, sir. <clears throat> Uh, communication, which we're having problems with right now. So uh, it's uh, just as you're scheduling a time to do your scout, it's important to um, schedule time to relay the information to the people taking the action. And you may be that person, I don't know, but if uh, if you can get together uh, head to head and, uh, and be able to uh, convey all that information to them kind of at the same time so you're not looking around for them, 
in the greenhouse. If you know it's, uh, you know, Tuesday at four or Tuesday at two, uh, keep it at that. And then they get on the schedule as well, those people. And usually it's early enough in the week so that you, uh, so they can do the action before they go home on the weekend, if they ever go home on the weekend. So, uh, and that goes for the person doing the action as well, needs to communicate um, back back to them, uh, back to the scout. Uh, when when are they available? Um, are, are you seeing a, a problem, an issue coming up? Uh, maybe there's a sprayer part uh, that needs to be ordered, um, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, be uh, clear and direct with the recommendations. If you are given recommendations, um, uh, so that there's no uh, there's no uh, discussion on whether it's the right one or not. Usually, there's two or three uh, recommendations that you can pick. Um, if you come in with all three, uh, sometimes it's just to uh, wishy-washy on, on it. So, so pick one ahead of time and then, uh, and then, um, and then meet with your person doing the action. Wish I had a name for them, but if, um, and then if the recommendation was changed, let's say it was a spray and they, and they used a different spray. First of all, you have to know that that happened. Um, why is a good reason or a good question to ask. So, Make sure that you uh, you find out why that is. Uh, maybe they didn't have that particular spray, um, and then observe the results. Um, what I do is, if there hasn't been, um, if it, let's say there's been a, a substitution in the sprays, for instance, I'll look and see what that result uh, is. Sometimes I already know the answer; <laughs> it wasn't going to work, but. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes they substitute because they didn't have it or whatever. They couldn't get it. Um, same with uh, with biocontrol. If you missed a week, uh, for instance, in one spot, observe the results and see whether you can get away with that or can't. So um, that's important. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so again, uh, following up, um, you have to assess uh, especially when uh, releasing biologicals, are you um, uh, are you releasing enough? Uh, uh, determine if the spots need more, um, or possibly need a uh, a knockdown spray. Uh, and of course, the sprays that are available to us in Canada, we're able to use um, a fair amount of those uh, without knocking down the biocontrol. Um, so assessment after the fact is important. You can do that in your next scout. You don't have to do a special trip into the crop. Sometimes you do though. Um, so one of the things that could be happening is the, the pests are still migrating from a, from a previous hotspot. So, uh, that's important to know. So was that bio release enough to stop that? Um, so is a spray needed? Um, did it work? Uh, if not, why not? Um, one of the things uh, I have had trouble with in the past is the flagging system that uh, it seemed to be kind of a run on it uh, maybe 10 years ago uh, where people were putting up different flags in their crops for different pests uh, when they saw them. One thing that was happening was um, knowing when those uh, those spots where the flags were were under control, uh, the flags tend to stay up longer than they needed to be. I'll just give you one example. I was in a, a grower uh, years ago, and it's kind of a, a corporate grower, a large grower, and um, I was leaving the flagging up to someone else. I was get kind of giving them recommendations, and then they would put a flag out, kind of thing. And what I didn't realize was they were in the process of selling the greenhouse. So they were having potential buyers come through the greenhouse and they had used the flagging system for a while. But when I came in, it looked like there was way more problems than there was because they, they didn't remove the old ones. Um, 
it, as a result, it was, it was pretty tough for me to explain that to the, the corporate people coming in. Um, but, uh, but it's just one example of, uh, you know, what you don't want is people to see coming into your greenhouse and seeing more, you know, flags on every, every bench. So, uh, just if you are using them, uh, remove them when you need to. Yes, sir.